thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this bar in a box. It can quickly and easily transform into a compact unit when it's not needed, but then open up and be expanded when you're entertaining. Let me show you how I built it. I'm going to start off by building the main body. I'm using DAP's Weldwood glue on every joint, then a brad nailer to pin things together. For material, I'm using an exterior grade MDF called Armorite. Armorite is a dream to cut on the CNC, so it is my first choice for projects I'm gonna be painting. Next, I could lay the box I'm making over, overhanging that bottom so that the unit lays flat on the workbench. Then I crawled inside and laid down a bead of glue all along the edge. This is so that it could pen on some trim, and it might seem confusing for a moment, but you'll see how it all comes together shortly. For right now, I only placed four pieces of trim on and left a gap in the center. This is so I could flip the entire thing over, again moving the unit to the edge so that it can lay flat, and then applied more glue to the inside of the overhanging trim boards. These trim boards will now catch a panel that will eventually become the front of the unit. Mine was a little tight, but it's nothing a little stomping on couldn't fix. Well, that worked out. <laughs> To hold it in place while the glue set up, I used a few pin nails all along the perimeter. I wish I would have stood it up at this moment to show you where I was going, but since I didn't, let me just skip ahead in the footage to give you a visual. Now that you see where I'm going with it, let me go back to adding in the divider. This is gonna create two inside cuppies, so I placed it right in the center. To avoid measuring, I actually grabbed these shelves that I already cut to length and used two to act as spacers, setting one at the base and one at the top to make sure that the divider was going in parallel. To pin it in place, I used my speed square to project down the line of the edge. Unlike typical MDF, Armory doesn't mushroom out or flake off when using a nailer. With that in, I moved to the side of the unit to start building a box. This is gonna be the bottom platform that will house the casters. I again used wood glue and brad nails to join things together. By the way, I have a set of plans that have a cut list and material list if you want to build your own. Now this box I clamped to the bottom side of the unit so that I could climb back on top of my workbench to secure it from the top side. As far as mobility goes, I don't expect to move this thing a lot, so I only put on two fixed casters. However, another option is to put on four swiveling casters that will give you more mobility. But keep in mind this is going to be heavy. I placed my two fixed casters on one side and then what I'm going to call a foot on the other. This foot is just long enough so that when the unit is sitting flat, the casters don't touch the ground. This will ensure the bar can't roll around until I tilt it up slightly on one end and intentionally wheel it to where I want to go. <laughs> While giggling, of course. Okay, with the body upright, now I can finish out the front trim. This is as simple as cutting the pieces to length, then gluing and nailing them in place. I actually carried the bottom right trim piece to my house and forgot it, so just imagine that in place as well. Let's go to the inside of the unit and add in some shelves. Keep in mind, you could add as many or as few as you wanted, but I personally only wanted one shelf per side. My plan for keeping things from falling over is to run small metal tubing across the front. I made all of my location marks using a square, then counterboard with a drill bit just slightly larger than the tubing. On the center divider, I made a through hole. In this way, once done, I could feed the tubing in from the left, go through the center, and go into the right wall. I will glue these in later, but for now, I left them dry and moved on to making the doors which is a really similar process to making the body. I started by building a box, using wood glue and brad nails. Then I line the edge with a bead of more wood glue to add on trim. Again, this trim will eventually be the show face you see. So right now I'm building it upside down, but by doing it this way, I'm able to flip it over and easily insert in the front panel so that it's captured by this trim and flushing it to the front. You just have to make sure it's seated down all the way when you're securing it. Next, I did the same process I did to the body by adding in shelves where I wanted them.
If you use my plans, you can certainly use my dimensions, which fit standard bottles, or you can adjust them to store the items you're looking to shelf. Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. I use Simply Safe for my commercial shop, my personal shop, as well as my home. Simply Safe protects your home around the clock, 24/7, every door, window, and room. In fact, their 24/7 professional monitoring is now powered by Fast Protect technology, exclusively from Simply Safe. When a threat is detected, Simply Safe monitoring professionals promptly contact you and dispatch first responders to your home, even if you're away or unable to respond. I've actually had two instances where police have been dispatched to locations, so there is no safe like Simply Safe. Ordering and setup are so easy, you can design a system best fit for your space, and the best part is it ships directly to your doorstep, so you don't have to set up a service appointment. There is never a long-term contract, and they even have a 60-day risk-free trial to see if you like it. Simply Safe protects over 1 million homes in the US alone. You can click the link down in the description or go to simplysafe.com slash April. After adding on the cabling, I started making an adjustable foot. When the doors fold out, this door will be able to drop down to the ground and lock in place. To do this, I started by drilling two through holes for carriage bolts. Once put through the foot slots, I added a wing nut to the inside to give me a locking feature. The great thing about this is even if the bar is slightly on uneven ground, it won't matter because each wing will be able to drop down its foot independently from the other. While I had the doors on my workbench, I dapped and caulked everything. I'm using Platinum's patch by DAP to fill in any of the nail holes or seams that will show on the face. Then for the caulk, I used Alex's Fast Dry. After doing it once, I repeated it all again to build a second, making sure that they were mirrored to each other and not identical. Things are looking right, so let's hang them on the body. I used a small spacer to rest on the platform of the body to set the door on and create the clearance needed. I tried to drop the foot down to hold its position. Do you see? Oh! <laughs> okay, okay. It didn't work, so instead I hooked my foot on the underside and just made sure to have my drill ready. I like to pre-drill for the smaller screws that come with hinges, but it's really as simple as pre-drilling then attaching the screws. Open. And then close. Neat. Ta da! I think this thing is awesome, but let me work on the top. For a top, I went with two layers of the same material that this entire unit is made from, which is the exterior rated MDF called Armorite. You can get one inch thick Armorite, but half inch is just way easier and cheaper to get a hold of. So I cut and then glued two pieces together to create that one inch thickness. Since I discovered Armorite last year, you've been seeing me use it more and more for projects where regular MDF simply wouldn't be an option. To have an exterior rated MDF truly is a game changer. Even when getting wet, it doesn't swell or fall apart like typical MDF. It is incredible to machine coming right off a cut being nice and smooth and it has zinc borate in it to resist termites and other insects. I'll leave you a link if you're interested in finding Armorite near you. To accommodate the body expanding out but the doors folding, I somehow need the top to expand out. And that is where these cool little hinges come in. They're called flap hinges. They are kind of tricky to drill for because they're only a portion of a circle, so you can't use an entire Forstner bit like you can on a regular cabinet hinge. However, a simple fence at the drill press solves this issue. I set the fence so that most of the drill bit was going into the material, but the rest was going into the fence. Then I would use the hinge itself to gauge the depth. Once I repeated this on two sections, I could screw the hinges in place and test it out. I've never used these hinges before, so I was very happy to see them work so well. Okay, now the real test. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it works like a charm. Okay, so the idea is to place the two sections at the center, right on top so that when they're folded in, it's nice and compact, but then I can flip them out to expand it. After positioning the top section squarely, I pre-drilled and then secured with screws. like how the doors could be set at any angle, so I added in a stop block to dictate the exact location. Nice and simple. I do love it when things work out, but until this moment, I wasn't sure if they would, and that's why I did a full assembly before doing any of the finishing work. So now I'm actually going to backtrack and do the finishing. 
I wanted to paint the body and then use laminate for the top. But know that if you're building off my set of plans and you could skip the entire dry run you just saw me go through. For painting the body, I actually have an entire video outlining the proper way to paint MDF, so I'll link that video for you to watch. Then for the top, I chose a black laminate, which can be a little tedious to apply, but it's actually quite simple. First thing to know is you want to band the edges of anything first. To apply it, use something called contact cement. It's traditionally sold in a can that you can brush on, but DAP has actually come out with a spray form that I love. I use cardboard as a backer to catch any of the overspray. When, when using contact cement, you need to apply it to both surfaces that will be adhered together. You can see on the actual unit, I just use a collection of trash to get its overspray. Then also something you need to contact cement is you actually let both surfaces dry a little bit until it's tacky before you stick them together. This is typically between three to 10 minutes, depending on your climate but then you can just push them together. A roller is a great tool to have around to apply pressure, but you can use anything that won't scuff the surface. After getting all of the edges banded, then you can repeat on the faces. And I actually wanted the two center pieces to be seamless, so I first screwed them down to the body of the unit. Then I repeated by spraying both the MDF and the laminate, making sure to get the edges really well coated. Again, applying pressure with anything that won't scuff the surface. The reason you want to leave a piece oversized when doing laminate is because it's way easier to use a flush trim bit and a router to make it perfectly flush after the fact, than trying to align two pieces perfectly fit for each other. One last thing to note about contact cement, it is not like wood glue to where you can place it down and then slip it around slightly to adjust it. Once it makes contact, it's pretty much stuck. So make sure you like its position before putting it down. With the laminate down, now is actually the proper time to drill for the hinges. To prevent the Forstner bit from walking around and tearing up the surface, you first want to pre-drill with a small drill bit. Then to prevent the edge and the face of the laminate from tearing out, you can clamp a board in place. You can use any scrap wood as long as it's flushed with the surface and then use a large clamp to go from the far left to the far right. For the face, I used a jig with a through hole. I clamped the jig in place and drilled down until the depth was correct for the hinge to be flush. Once you break through the laminate, you can remove the jig. Now the hinges and those outer wings can be added to the center section and I am gonna call this project done. Doop. Doop. And this is what it looks like when it's compact and stowed away. But then to use it, we'll pick the wing, drop the foot, flip out this wing, drop the foot, flip out the top, and the bar is open. Then for you to see it from the bartender side, I put two barrel bolts on the doors to keep them shut. Then on the inside, there is plenty of storage space for bottles, shakers, or glasses. What I plan to do is keep mine full while it's the nice season of being outside, but then I'm gonna empty it and stow it away during the cold season. If you were looking for a bar solution, then I really hope this video has inspired you to tackle it yourself. Don't forget, I do have a set of plans that comes with the material shopping list, the dimensions, and the cut list if, if you want a head start on it all. That's it for this one, though. I will see you on whatever I'm tackling next, guys.